When researching this video, most of the reviews I read for the Ice Powers were from people just like me who hadn't heard of it before they read it and then were absolutely shocked and how good it was after they did. Uh, there's literally a quote on the back cover of my edition from Max Porter that says, I'm surprised it isn't the most famous book in the world. And I won't lie, I was tempted to make this video just one long pitch to try and convince people to read it. But on Out of the Page, we try to attack from a different angle than that. So what I wanna do is focus on the reasons the book is so good and the lessons that other writers can take away from it. And that is the silence and ambiguity that fills every page of the Ice Palace, much like the frost and snow that permeates every corner of the town that it is set in. As a quick background, Tadio Vassos was a Norwegian novelist and poet that lived between 1897 and 1970. He published almost a dozen novels, as well as short story collections and volumes of poetry, much of which was concerned with themes of death, guilt, and isolation. His writing was commonly set in rural areas of Norway, where he spent his own youth, and where he is nowadays regarded as one of the great Norwegian writers. In his lifetime, he was nominated for the Nobel Prize some 30 odd times. However, as of the writing of this video, his English Wikipedia page is only four paragraphs long and most of his work is not easily accessible in translation. All of which seemed an incredible shame because if the Ice Palace is anything to go by, he was a writer of significant talent. The Ice Palace is the story of two girls who live in an isolated town deep in the frozen forests of southern Norway. Sis is a lively, popular girl, and Un is a quiet loner, who most of the other kids keep away from. The two girls are strangely drawn to one another, and Sis visits Un one night, where they have a short and awkward conversation, but one that feels immensely meaningful to both of them. The next day, Un feels that she can't bear to face Sis, and so skips school and visits a frozen waterfall near the town that the kids call the Ice Palace. She feels herself drawn inside, and as she explores the frozen caves, the writing becomes hallucinatory and claustrophobic. Un becomes lost and trapped inside, and eventually succumbs to hypothermia. The rest of the book is concerned with the town's search for Un, and the effect that this all has upon Sis, feeling that she and Un shared something that others cannot understand. As the townsfolk begin to move on with their lives, Sis begins to isolate herself, and becomes as cut off and distant as both Un and the Ice Palace itself. Most of that information is actually found on the back cover to the book, so I haven't really spoiled anything, and I don't want to, because obviously I think it is a book much worth reading. It is also very, very short. My copy runs about 130 pages in translation, and they are short pages at that. And for a book so short and with such a simple story, Vesos actually manages to pull off some incredible literary feats. For one, as I mentioned, the book is filled with this sense of silence and isolation, and Vesos actually manages to create this feeling without ever really using the terms. Instead, he spends long passages describing the natural world around the town, the darkness at the side of the road at night, the distant cracking sounds of the lake freezing over. Characters speak mostly in short sentences, many of which aren't particularly direct and require some interpretation on behalf of the reader. The book is technically written in third person, but some of the chapters are actually just poems and others begin as first person thoughts before the narrative actually kicks in to explain the context for them. All of which serves to give the impression that we are in a quiet, desolate location where even the smallest noises are steeped in deeper meaning. And speaking of meaning, Vessos actually does something with the Ice Palace that many writers try and fail to do, and that is to leave things ambiguous. Normally, leaving it up to the reader to decode events or conversations that are integral to the plot feels like a cop-out and is something that I traditionally hate. Usually, it feels like either the unspoken thing is actually really obvious and leaving it unspoken is just a ploy to make the book seem more interesting, or, on the other hand, it feels like the writer has written themselves into a corner and the only solution is to just not explain certain things. That is not at all the case here. Some fairly vital information is actually completely left out 
of the Ice Palace. And the reason it doesn't feel like a cop-out is because it is perfectly in line with the rest of the book. From the first page, it is obvious that you are reading a book where things are going to be left to your interpretation. Unliving elements of the natural world are described in human terms. Chapters vary widely in their length from dozens down to half a page. Characters' thoughts are described as though they are happening, and Vassos only leaves clues to explain to you that they are not. In the entire book, only two characters are actually given names, Sis and Un, and all of the other characters are given a title that describes their relationship to the girls, such as Auntie or Teacher. So the reason that the ambiguity, and there is a lot of it, doesn't feel out of place is because it isn't. The Ice Palace is a quiet, strange book that defies easy description and continues to surprise the reader in its form and structure until the very last pages. It definitely is a novel, but calling it one doesn't really feel like it does it justice. It would be fairer to call The Ice Palace a work of art, and in the words of Max Porter, I am surprised that it isn't one of the most famous books in the world, although I think I know the reason why. For how short of a novel it is and for how easy of a read it is, it is not actually an easy read at all. It is dark and it is sad and kind of disturbing in parts and feels very much more like a cult classic than it does an actual modern classic. Something of which I'm sure viewers of this channel at least are sure to appreciate. So on that note, if you have read The Ice Palace, which I'm hoping some people who find this video have, please let me know your thoughts because it's not one that I think gets a hell of a lot of publicity, but certainly deserves it. And I'd love to know what you think of it. And if it isn't obvious, no prizes for guessing, I would highly recommend reading it if you haven't already. Thank you for watching the video. And I just wanna say I've recently hit about 330 odd subscribers to the channel and that's a hell of a lot and I'm incredibly appreciative of it. It makes me really happy to see that there are so many other people out there who love poetry and high literature as much as I do. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Have a good week or weeks. I know I'm not the most frequent uploader, but I can guarantee I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. So until I see you, enjoy yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you later.